Today on Public Eye News, we're going to be talking about the flooding in Texas and more on the missing Wisconsin girl whose parents were found dead earlier this week. Adam Diaz takes a look at some snowy weather and Ross Ray has our sports from the ice to the field. Hi, I'm Grant Lukens. And I'm Cesar Roberts. This, this is Public Eye News. Flu season is approaching alongside the unrelenting cold, and NMU has joined the fight against the germs. Wednesday, October 17th, the NMU Health Center hosted an open flu shot clinic from students of NMU School of Nursing. These students get their real patient experience outside of mannequins and hot dogs. The flu shot price is based at $30, and the alternative payment methods include insurance, and it can be billed to a student's account. The next opening for flu shots will be on Halloween as the third and final one. Make sure that you get your flu shot because it helps protect you and protects those around you. In other news, a catastrophic fire left seven students stranded on October 15th in Houghton, Michigan, near the Michigan Tech campus on Blanc Street. Seven students who lived at the residence discovered a fire in the upstairs of the office off-campus home around 10.30 p.m., according to one of the students. After the school officials found out about the incident, they took action. All seven roommates' belongings were left in the home and destroyed. Based on the claims of Chief Reynolds, there was a significant damage along with water damage. After the fire, university officials took the students shopping at Walmart for necessities like clothing and toiletries. Moreover, the university is making it the responsibility to find them a permanent residence on campus so they can stay on top of their coursework. Despite the heat, the students are safe and sound. Three men have been arrested for prescription fraud and are set to be sentenced in Marquette County District Court. 19-year-old Jordan Whale, 36-year-old Jackson Trombley, and 21-year-old Joshua Moyodenu all pleaded guilty for a reduced sentence. The arrest stemmed from an investigation where the party picked up a prescription they did not have authorization to get. A Watersmeet Township man has been arrested for having meth delivered to him through the mail. James Canella, 53, pleaded on October 9th to possession of meth. His count of delivery and manufacture of meth were dismissed. The Gogebic Iron Area Narcotics Team, or Giant, arrested Canella after tips he was getting meth through the mail. A sentencing date is scheduled for November 29th. On Tuesday, the Marquette Board of Commissioners passed a balanced budget. However, the budget is about a quarter million less than last year. Regardless of the board's unanimous votes, they were, unable, they were able to keep their current employees, consult their unions, and maintain their current services. The budget was cut due to the loss of several tax re revenues, and it is now set at more than $22.7 million, a capital improvements budget of more than $400,000, and other fund budgets of $33.7 million. Authorities looking for the missing Wisconsin girl whose parents were murdered said the tip placing the girl in Miami was not credible. Barron County Sheriff Chris Fitzgerald said that Miami police tweeted the information without consulting the Wisconsin police. The Associated Press reports that the grandfather of the teenager is also missing since the parents were found dead. Miami police said they saw a girl matching the description of, a Wisconsin, of the Wisconsin girl in a black Ford Explorer with two well-dressed bearded men. And after this break, we'll be back with your national and international news. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Eric, the Travel Guy. You know, fantastic experiences await you in every corner of the globe, but you don't always have to travel that far to uncover them. So join me each week as we go on and off the beaten path, learn something new, and get in the kitchens of some of today's hottest chefs. We're exploring beyond your backyard. Saturdays at 4.30 p.m. after Great Getaways on Public TV 13. Welcome back. More on the case of the journalist that went missing in Saudi Arabia. President Trump says that the U.S. is asking for the audio and video relating to the missing journalist, if any exists. Turkish officials say the journalist was murdered in, Saudi Arabia, in Saudi's Istanbul consulate, which Saudi officials have denied. U.S. officials say they are taking the disappearance very seriously. 
President Trump has asked for people to remain calm and not point fingers as the, at the Saudis until more evidence has come out. More heavy rain in central Texas this morning could bring a new round of violent flooding. Nearly a foot of rain in the past week has left houses underwater, with rivers and lakes rising to near historic levels. At least one person has died. Texas's governor has declared disasters in 18 counties. Mark Strassman in Llano, Texas, northwest of Austin, where people are still in danger. With a thunderous boom, the fast-moving water burst from the 10 open floodgates of the Max Starkey Dam. I've never seen this. <laughs> Craig Campbell owns a home near the dam on the Colorado River in Marble Falls and watched his boat and dock get destroyed by the rushing flood water. Oh, my God. In Kingsland, this bridge built 49 years ago was no match for the Llano River, crumbling to pieces as water levels topped 39 feet. That rising river, which looks like waves churning in the ocean, was too much for a bridge that was inspected just last year and found to be structurally sound. Here's the good news for people who live on the other side. They're not marooned. There is another way out. But there are those who stayed put, prompting fire officials to begin dangerous rescue missions. The water's moving so quickly, uh, and plus the debris, we just can't put boats in that kind of water, so we need the helicopters as well. Authorities have warned people to stay off the roads. In Leander, Texas, the driver of this school bus was arrested after he drove around a barricade right into a flooded road. One student on board had to be rescued from the rushing waters. While that water is already starting to recede in some areas, county officials warn the danger is not over. It will go back up, so we ask that people please do not attempt to go back to homes if you've evacuated them. Two more pieces of bad news. Several cell towers have been destroyed, so rescuers have had a harder time communicating. And then there's the forecast. More rain through Saturday. Mark Strassman, CBS News, Llano, Texas. In Kenya, the Somali officials claim that the U.S. airstrike that has been carried out for nearly a year has killed several recruits, more than the U.S. announced. On Friday, two officials told the Associated Press that there were multiple missiles fired by unnamed U.S. drones. The numbers of deaths equated to 75, and based on the condition of their bodies, they were burned beyond recognition. However, 60 extremists were killed. The airstrike was meant for the Al-Qaeda extremist group, who have been earned the reputation as the most deadliest in the sub-Saharan Africa. The recruits who were killed by the U.S. airstrike have been planning to carry out a su out suicide bombings on Somali and AU bases. This attack painfully set the Al-Shabaab back. Today, we can see our interview with Katie Fahey from Voters Not Politicians to learn more about the gerrymandering and Proposal 2, which hopes to end it. This is the second installment of this series, and we continue where we left off with the topic of gerrymandering. Well, you mentioned that your family didn't know what gerrymandering was, and I think that might be a term that not a lot of people are too familiar with. Can you explain what gerrymandering is to our viewers? Yeah, yeah. So we have representatives that we vote for. We have our state house, our state senate, and then we have our federal uh, congressional members. And so those members uh, were all lumped together as voters in different voting districts. Um, and once every 10 years after the census, our politicians go behind closed doors with lobbyists and the political parties, and they try and divide up our communities and say, you know, oh, I like the way you vote, or I don't like the way you vote, so I'm going to either include you or not include you. Or even if a politician knows where the person running against them lives, they can draw their house out of the district three months before the election, which is ridiculous. It's a very large conflict of interest where, of course, if you're going to be playing in a game and you get to make the own rules, you're going to benefit. Try and make yourself benefit. And so gerrymandering is just a term of saying when those lines are drawn, they're drawn to benefit a political party or an individual politician. Okay. So now it's been a process. We will conclude our interview with Katie Fahey this Friday when we will learn more about Proposal 2 itself. And after the break, we will be back with your weather and sports. Stay tuned. On the next edition of Made for Port, we'll learn about our own Ernie Stevens involvement as a coach for the Youth Lacrosse Program for the Oneida Nation of Wisconsin. We'll learn about a 12-ton, 50-foot sculpture named Dignity in South Dakota. And we learn more about how to deal with the effects of intergenerational trauma in part two of our discussion with Dr. Martin Brogenleg. 
We also learn about what we can do to lead healthier lives and hear from our elders on this Native Report. Saturday afternoon at 5 on Public TV 13. Hi, and welcome back to your Public Eye News Weather. I am MD as your weather man. Behind me, we're looking at a gloom NMU campus where we saw some snow this morning. And current conditions, we are looking at some snow showers. Temperature at 36 degrees. Winds at northwest at 20 miles an hour. Barometric pressure at 30.19 and rising. Looking at tonight, we're looking at partly cloudy, low of 27 and winds west at 13 miles an hour. Looking at tomorrow, we're looking at sunny, the high of 55. The winds southwest at 19 miles an hour. And looking around RUP, we are starting at Sault Ste. Marie, where it is raining. And few other parts are a little bit sunny, but mostly cloudy. And we are starting at Sault Ste. Marie at 35 degrees. Manistique at 39. Uh, Escanaba at 42. Manami at 43. And we're going to Iron Mountain at 39. Ironwood at 35, Houghton at 36, and then beautiful Marquette at 36 degrees. Looking ahead into our week, we're going into Friday, the high of 54, the low of 36, and showers. Saturday, we look at the high of 38, the low of 32, and AM light rain. Sunday, we're looking at the high of 39, the low of 31, and partly cloudy. We're looking at another gloom weekend, but I do hear you have some bright on uh, NMU hockey. Indeed I do. Coming off of a split series with the Michigan State Spartans this past weekend, the Northern Michigan Wildcats continue on the road to this upcoming weekend against St. Cloud, Cloud State University. St. Cloud currently sits undefeated after one week of playing as ranked number four in the nation. Although NMU split their season against MSU, several players had strong showings, including Ate Tullivan, who made 67 saves in the series at his 100th start for the Wildcats. Friday's game gets underway at 8.07, while Saturday's puck drop is scheduled for 7.07. While the hockey Wildcats may have to wait one more week to open their home season, the volleyball Wildcats prepare to close their home season this weekend. Following a strong showing at the Midwest Region Conference crossover where the team went undefeated, the Wildcats return to the Vanderman Arena in, high hope, in hopes of a strong finish at home. Friday's game will pit the Wildcats against Saginaw Valley State University, and that game starts at 7 p.m. Saturday. Which, Saturday, which is Seniors Day, seems the Wildcats in action against Lake Superior State University at 4.30. Both games are GLIAC contests, so all, three, so all three teams will be vying to finish as high as in the standings as possible. We are in the midst of October, which can only mean one thing, playoff baseball. Tonight, the Milwaukee Brewers will play the Los Angeles Dodgers in a series that is now tied after the 13th inning win for the Dodgers last night. That game starts at 5.05 and can be seen on Fox Sports 1. The NLCS, the NLCS might be overshadowed, however, after reports of spying between the two teams in the ALCS. The Houston Astros have been accused of spying on their opponent, the Boston Red Sox. While the MLB says that they are investigating the claims of the spying, and it will be an interesting storyline to track through tonight's match up between the two teams. Boston currently leads the series 2-1, to one, and that game can be seen on TBS tonight at 8.39. And that's all we have for tonight's show. Thank you for tuning in, and tune in tomorrow for some more Public Eye News. Studios located in the Edgar L. Hardin Learning Resources Center by WNMU-TV, Northern Michigan University Public Television.